What is going on guys, Ian here, and today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D tutorial. Um, sorry I haven't been that active lately, I've had tons of uni work to do, so i kind of put off this hobby, uh, which it is, um, to actually focus on my degree and hopefully get a job at the end, so I felt that was more important. But anywho, now that I've done most of that, for now anyway, I can actually go back to making some tutorials. So this one is pretty much about the effectors and how to create some quite fun animations and you might get a better understanding of how I actually made some of my intros. So these can be put into any of your bits of work, any animation, um, and they get some really fun results and pretty interesting as well. So let's just dive in really. So first of all we need Cinema 4D obviously. Um, and what I'm going to do is just create a basic shape. Um, this really doesn't matter what it is but for this purpose I'm going to recreate uh, what I made in one of in fact in my um, intro. So I'm just going to create a basic cylinder here and then I'm just going to duplicate it so that's um, just clicking and dragging holding down control and it creates a duplicate of the object and I'm going to make this one a lot smaller uh, just move it to the end a bit just drag it down a bit more and just increase the radius so we get uh, this kind of shape here which has kind of little bit at the end and then I'm just going to highlight them both here in the objects menu press C on my keyboard to make them editable and then go down to connect objects and delete so we have this object here and then I'm just going to um, enable the axis modification and then go into my top view here and just drag it to the end where the um, little bit at the end isn't so the offset end as that will be the top and this will be the bottom of it so now if we go back to our main view we have this shape here nothing special so we're going to actually throw it into a cloner object just put that in there and straight away we have more than one which is cool so we're going to change the mode to radial and the radius down to zero now this is nice but what we actually want to do is control the angle a bit more so we want the start angle to be on about minus 90 and if you play around you want this on I believe it's 135 but it depends on how many you have in here so I want to add a couple more and for some reason you had to bring that down I think it's to um, no that's not right <laughs> If we go into this view here, we get a better understanding. And we go to 120 degrees. I'm sure there's a way to work it out, I just can't be bothered. So now we have this shape here, which is starting to take form. Uh, looks a bit nicer than just radi um, sorry, uh, radial around the whole way, 360 uh, degrees. So we have this object here but if we play through the animation it does nothing so what I'm going to do is on frame 30 I'm actually going to make a keyframe on the start and the end angle so that's just holding down control and just clicking little circles and if they're red you have a keyframe and then I'm going to go back to frame 0 and change these both to 0 and holding down control make another keyframe so now if we play through we get this cool animation and one thing else I'm going to add is in the transform option I'm just going to make a keyframe with the scale on 1 uh, this is on frame 30 and then I'm going to go back to 0 and change these all to 0 and make another keyframe so now if we play through what we get is this building animation with them coming out at angles as well now obviously you could uh, play around with this so it extends all the way so um, 
we can do that as well if we make a keyframe on one in fact if we just drag no that's not going to work um, if we go to our timeline and go into the cloner you'll see we have different keyframes for both the uh, scale which is S and that's the directional scale so the X, Y and Z axis and we have the keyframes for our start and end angle so what I wanted to do was make the um, start and end angle keyframes appear um, after uh, it's fully extended so what we can do hopefully is select both of these and both of these and just drag them over to the 30 mark so now hopefully this will work we play through it extends and expands so what we might want to do is just overlap these a tiny bit so maybe 10 frames so now it comes out and just before it finishes it extends now this animation is nice but the problem with it is it's a bit too linear um, everything kind of just fits into place nothing else really happens so that's where effectors can come in quite well so if we select our cloner and go back to MoGraph go to effectors and click um, where is it? delay and if we play through nothing really happens so what we wish to do here is kind of create a kind of spring action so it kind of bounces into place and luckily um, in the effector of the delay uh, and the mode there's something called spring and to make sure this works you may need to make sure that under the cloner effectors the delay is there if it's not just drag it in so now if we play through we kind of get this little spring action it's not that noticeable um, you might not be able to see it that well so if we crank up the strength what you can see is we get this quite cool animation and if we go a bit too far we get this really interesting shape here so this is a way to create kind of um, some more interesting animations really uh, it kind of makes the scene look a bit nicer um, the only issue with the delay effector is it's quite hard to control exactly what you wish to do um, but it creates these really nice animations and I really like the effect really um, this is what I used in my personal animation um, obviously the strength wasn't so high um, but I also used this with uh, the little uh, like rings or tubes that go around the outside. I'll show you how to do that as well. If we just create a tube, shockingly, uh, just going to change the orientation to um, the x-axis. Just increase the inner radius a little bit, and I'm just going to add some fillet caps. Um, if I put this down to one and just increase it all the way and it literally doesn't matter um, I'm just doing this um, I don't really know why just because I can um, just throw this into a cloner object as well and we're just going to change the Y position to zero and just adjust the X axis just so they're pretty much touching um, you can do this uh, by putting it to 100 and let's just increase the count to 10 just so we get a few more hoops and now what we want to do is create a plane object straight away they kind of bounce up a bit that's because in the parameters the position is to plus 100 let's just turn that off and we're actually going to change the scale click uniform scale so it uh, changes the scale in each axis axis um, the same and change it to minus one and it disappears 
That's why we want to go to the fall off, change the shape to linear, and the orientation to minus x. And now if we were to drag this along, we have this appearing. So these kind of only appear one at a time. That's because the um, size is a bit small. So if we drag that over, you can see more appear at once. Um, so let's just make a keyframe with the plane effector here at zero and another keyframe with them all appearing at 30. I didn't make a keyframe, my bad. I accidentally clicked play. So make a keyframe and if we play through, they all appear. Again, they don't really bounce at all. That's why we want to go to our cloner and insert a delay. Remember, if you have the cloner selected and then put it in the effector, it automatically puts it in like the plane. So now we have these, and if we play through, nothing really happens. Um, again, we need to change the effector to spring. So now if we play through, we get these all bouncing into place. Uh, we can go a bit higher uh, to make them spin a bit more. Now, one thing with this is you might not want it to rotate. So in the parameters section, you have position, scale, and rotation. Check off the rotation, and it all just bounces up and down. You can even change the position off. And so now all you're changing is the scale. And if it's too high, turn it down a bit. There you are. So this is a really quick guide to using the delay. It uh, can be used for so many things. Uh, you can even use it uh, just by inserting a cube. I turn off this as well changing the size down a bit, throwing this in a cloner, um, changing it to maybe grid, changing this so they're all spread out quite a lot, and changing these up, maybe too far. So now we have all these. Could even throw in a random effector to change the position up a bit. Maybe change these. Ooh. Ooh, dear. So we have these scattered around, and then we could even change the size, make it uniform, just so we have different sizes in here. Then with the cloner selected, we can go to maybe um, the plane effector to change the scale down to zero and then we make a keyframe with the strength at 100 and on 30 the strength at zero originally the animation will just make them appear like that and if we throw in the delay effector with spring added change this to maybe 60 Um, have I added it? There you go, there's a pretty interesting animation there. Um, yeah, I believe that's just from the effector. That's not really what I expected, but there you go, there's a pretty cool animation there. And that's only with a couple of keyframes. What would happen if we change this to say 200? Oh, you can't. Um, yeah, so there's a pretty cool animation. Maybe if we got rid of them and Kept that at a hundred, and actually change the scale. Um, I made another keyframe there. 
No, that does the same. Uh, what effect am I trying to make? Let's make that minus one. Okay, so that's at minus one. Just going to turn that plane effect off. Uh, let's change it to linear again. We are affecting the right thing, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Okay, if we just get rid of that for now, um, put in a plane effector. That's the kind of effect I wanted. Let's just make the scale in the, the right direction a bit bigger. Make a keyframe on its position there, and another when they all appear there. Now, if we put in the delay effector, change it to spring. There we go. That's what I wanted. Now they kind of appear and spring into place. So, that's quite a cool effect um, if you wanted something um, a bit random, um, kind of dots appearing all over the screen. You can change these down to something smaller. Um, so you kind of get all these points just appearing in the air randomly. Um, obviously these are a bit small as you can't see them really. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, it's a really powerful uh, little effector and all I touched was there's a spring there. Um, you can change it to blend or even. Um, not un entirely sure, I haven't really experimented with that too much, but there's something you can look into. And it has a fall off as well, uh, you can change that, but uh, for now this is pretty much all I use it for. Um, it creates these really nice um, scenes and Definitely my favourite being uh, this effect here, as that was something I used in one of my projects. Um, I actually worked it out during the project, I had no idea how to do it before. So my tip really is just, if you don't know how to use something in the programme, just experiment with it and you'll get some really cool results, just like these. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful somewhat, I know it's been a bit all over the place. But you kind of get the idea, I'm sure, and that's just three ways you could implement it into any one of your projects. So I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Remember to kind of leave a comment or like if you have any other ideas for tutorials that you wish to see. Um, just leave them in the comment section. I look through every comment, so if I see something I like, I'll probably credit you as well. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so yeah, just enjoy this tutorial and I shall see you in the next video.